Hi, Kevin. <laughs> Hello. I'm so happy to have you here. I respect your work very much, and it's an honor to have you live with us today. Thank you for your time. It's really a pleasure to be here with you today. <laughs> How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. It's, you know, a, a beautiful day. Um, I'm getting to meet all you lovely people in Romania. So <laughs> it's very exciting for me to, to always, when I get to, to meet other readers and other publishers, you know, from other countries. It's a pleasure. That's so nice. Thank you. So uh, the first one would be, what is your process of writing a story? Do you outline from the beginning the whole story or do you start with an idea and you will see uh, what's going to evolve during the process? You know, I begin with an idea and the outline sort of forms in my head. So I don't ever really write down an outline, but I it's almost like a puzzle. And I let the puzzle pieces just sort of um, come together in my head. And once I really, there comes to a point where I feel like, oh, I can writing now because I feel like I've enough of the story. That's when I begin writing. And, um, and then always when you're in a story, things change. You know, I find that your characters begin to tell you what they want to do. The situation changes. Um, so for me, it's, I always compare writing to, to making sculpture like carving a sculpture. You're carving, you're molding, you're making it look better and better, but you never really know what it's going to end up looking like in the end, even though you have a vision. So interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, I've seen that in all your books. The story is about people from the upper class of society. Why is that? And how did you discover this sort of theme? Well, um, when I went to school for, for um, creative writing, you know, I, I studied um, creative writing and journalism in, in, in university. Um, my teachers always said, you know, write what you know, write what you know. And this is a world that I know about, you know, very well. Um, I, I grew up in Singapore. I, you know, I grew up in an upper, you know, upper income family. And so I can only write what I know, <laughs> you know, and so I... It makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense. You set the world in the world that you, you feel like you best understand and you best have, you know, an ability to communicate authentically. What was your day like when you found out that a studio or a producer was interested in making a film about uh, your first book, Crazy Rich Asian? I really was very shocked, first of all, because it happened so quickly and it actually happened before the book was even published Whoa. so yes so the book was published for the you know crazy rich asians my first novel um came out in may 2013 and we got a phone call from an interested producer in april a month before the book even came Whoa. out so i was like what well, i don't quite understand how is this even possible it was very quick <laughs> it was very quick but of course you know it took some time to talk and meet other producers but I was just so incredibly happy and, and I feel so fortunate, you know, at that point, because there's so many books out there. There's so many amazing authors who've tell, told great stories who don't have the interest of Hollywood. And um, so I, I felt very, very lucky and fortunate. Yeah, that happened very quick. I think you were also very lucky or it was an opportunity that it happened so fast. Exactly. It was like a miracle. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's how I see it. Do you consider yourself more home in the US or in Singapore? And how were you welcomed by Hollywood? Were there any boundaries because you came from Singapore or no, you felt perfectly like home? Well, so for me, I, I feel very much um, like an, I'm an American. You know, I've, I've lived in the USA since I was 11 years old. So most of my life has been living in the United States, mainly in New York. You know, these days I'm in LA, but back then when I was first publishing Crazy Rich Asians, I, you know, had been in New York for more than 15 years. So that is home to me. Um, and I feel like it's interesting. I think timing is everything, you know, and luck and timing have so much to do with what happens. And in 2013, 
there was so much interest in Asia and what was happening in Asia, and especially with with so much prosperity. You know, there was you were starting to see so many wealthy people from Asia now traveling around the world, going shopping in all the luxury boutiques, and I think so. There was so much curiosity um, from Americans, from Hollywood, saying who. Why is it that all these Asians have all the money now and they're buying everything? <laughs> they're buying the real estate, they're buying the houses, the yachts, the planes, the Louis Vuitton, the Chanel, you know. And so right at that moment, that's when my book came out. And so I think Hollywood, Hollywood was fascinated at that time. They wanted to do a film that they thought would do very well in Asia. Um, of course, the surprise was it did much better in the USA than oh. in Asia. Um, but back then, you know, they were, they were very interested in capturing the Asian market. So they welcomed me and, and they thought it would be interesting to see if this was the book that could really launch a lot of Hollywood projects in Asia. How do you organize the creative process of writing? Do you try to write daily for one, two hours or when the inspiration hits you? You know, I wish I could say I only write when I'm inspired, but um, I found that you have to create, for me at least, writing is a discipline. You have to do it every day and you have to spend many, many hours, you know, writing before, before it really becomes good, <laughs> I think. So when I'm writing a book, I would say I, I write on a good day. If I'm very good, I would say six hours a day. Wow. If I'm not so good, maybe four hours. But yeah, it's something I have to do every day um when i'm in the book like every day even if you have even if you are inspired or not you're sitting at the desk and try to find inspiration and write something like, yes like exactly. a job like yeah it's like a job work. yeah you're going to work because you have a deadline right the publisher needs a book at a certain time and um i feel i feel like when you're in that practice, you know, it's almost like exercising. When you do it every day, you feel great. When you do it sometimes, you know, one day you skip. It's when you're inconsistent, it's not as good as when you're actually writing and training every single day. At least that's how it works for me. Yeah, I think in every file, it needs to be disciplined. So yeah. um, were you not interested in writing the script from um, for the movie Crazy Rich Asia? When they first were interested in, in, in buying the book and, and turning it into a movie, at that time, I felt like I didn't have the experience to do it. And I felt, you know, I have an opportunity to have my book become a movie. I want to get the best people to do this. I want the best screenwriter in the world. I want the best directors. I'm not the expert here. You know, all I did was write the book. But what I can do is ensure that there's the best team possible to make it happen. Um, that's the only way it's going to happen, you know, so I, I decided to, to not try to write the scripts. Um, since then, I've, I have written scripts, other scripts, you know, for original movies, for television. So I feel that I'm a little more experienced now, but it's still different when it's your own book, you know. Um, I can write an original script with an original story, but to take a book that I've written that's 500 pages long and to turn into a script that's 145 pages... I, I think it's, I'm too close to it. I'd rather have someone else look at the book and, and create the story. You know, I think we need that, that distance. How do you cope with the fear and anxiety? If you have, maybe you don't have, I don't know. When it comes to writing and publishing a new book, for example, Sex and Vanity, um, were you not afraid that with the first book you set the bar too high? Like it was a very <laughs> successful story and uh, you yeah. don't think about, I need to do better or I don't know. You know, I think I was in such a fortunate position having, you know, the, the, the first three books do so well that I felt with Sex and Vanity, I could actually take a risk now. I could play. I could do something very different um, because the first three books had done so well. Um, it, to me, it gave me freedom to try something new and to be a little more experimental. And, and so that's what I did. There was, there was not very much anxiety, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what do you think uh, was the most important aspect that brought you to su success? Wow, that's a good question. Um, I really feel like luck. 
I think luck is is really the the key to it. You know, I feel like I was so lucky in many ways because I I think there's so many talented people out there and there's so many amazing writers out there. You know, um, I can't explain why my book became an international bestseller. I can't explain why people liked it more than others um, because I don't feel like <laughs> I'm any better <laughs> than most other good writers out there. You know, so I have to say it's it's really to me. I think I, I was very lucky. Are you writing now a book? <laughs> Are you in the process of I writing am. a book? I am. I am. I'm. I'm writing the second book in the in this in the series that started with Sex and Vanity. So, so we are very curious to know what uh, what will come next. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I can't. It's all still top <laughs> secret. But um, you know, um, I I, know. I think I've mentioned in the press before the you know the 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 this new series, beginning of Sex and Vanity is inspired by cities that I love, you know? So Sex and Vanity was the New York story. And then the next two books that I'm writing are London okay. and Paris. Okay. Yeah. So it's gonna be New York, London, Paris, and um, you'll see, you know? I'm very excited to hear uh, the news about the other books that are coming. Thank you so much. And uh, trust me, I was uh, very, very excited and anxious <laughs> about this interview with you. So your inspiration for me and uh, I really, really like the books. And uh, I have a book club in Romania, a very big one. I think the biggest one. And um, I will speak about your books. I gave the books at the book club this month. So thank you. Thank so you much. so much. You know, I, I have to tell you, um, Romania is a very special place for me. Um, I've never visited but I had a very dear friend who was um, from Romania and I was um, a teenager. This was back in the, uh, the 80s, 1980s. And um, I worked at a church. Um, I worked and helped in the church with the children. And there was this other woman, her name was Margaret. And um, she had come recently, very recently from Romania with her whole family. Um, and at that time, you know, I was living in Houston, Texas, and um, she was probably one of the few Romanians in Houston. But we became very good friends as we worked together. And, you know, she was a little bit older than me, but her stories were fascinating. She would tell me all these stories of growing up in Romania. She would bring old photographs. Um, and so I feel like in my own small way, you know, she was very influential to me. In, in her telling her story encouraged me to tell my story. So it's truly a pleasure um, to, 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 to know that my books are read in Romania and, and to meet people like you. It's, it's really, really lovely. Thank you so much, Kevin. Okay, bye. Bye.